20 years. I mean, I can't believe it's gone by so quickly. And what do you make of it at this point in terms of the future of Hong Kong? Where, where are we now? I think we are probably uh, in a fairly good position. Um, you know, obviously, you know, one country, two system uh, has worked out, you know, pretty good uh, for you know, both ourselves and, also, of course, for the country. Um, I think the great majority, you know, of uh, people in Hong Kong, both local and uh, you know, business people from overseas here, uh, have nothing but confidence going forward. Political and economic divide, but still, I think we're maintaining that status of financial hub. But uh, we were just playing a, a sound clip from uh, Stephen Roach, the former Morgan Stanley chairman of Asia, and he said, "Look, 10 to 20 years from now, it's a little bit murky. Do you still see Hong Kong as an international hub after 20 years?" I think, obviously, you know, our future is very much intertwined with uh, mainland China today, uh, as opposed to, let's say, 30 years ago. Uh, even then, you know, we were big investors in China. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, I have no reason to be anything but optimistic, particularly when you look not just on mainland itself, but also we are in the heart of Asia. So, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a big number. And, you know, within five hours flying, we're covering something like four and a half billion people. But in order to maintain that status, Ron, I think there, there is a bit of a concern here on, on how they can keep that reputation as a safe place to do business and put your people in. And, and there are some concerns of how far China can go when it tries to clamp down possibly of something that it sees as a threat to its national interest. And, and we certainly saw a glimpse of that two years ago with the abduction of the, of the several booksellers here in Hong Kong. What impact do you think that has on business confidence here in the city? Um, I think people look at it incident by incident. Um, and also, if you look at Hong Kong in the context of a global context, what place for country now is trouble-free? There isn't, because I think one of the things, as you mentioned, the great divide uh, you know, between uh, you know, the economy, the have and have-nots, that doesn't add to it. But I'm hopeful that uh, the new administration coming in tomorrow, Carrie Lam and her team, uh, will heal uh, the rift that we've experienced in the past few years. But what does it tell us about China's agenda, Ron, when it comes to gaining full control of this city? Do you see, we've seen a bit of a pickup here in the last couple of years. Do you see that continuing to accelerate? I think the opportunities are there. It's up to our business people who are you know, historically uh, very good, uh, very adventurous uh, risk takers. Uh, but of course, with risk, there's also, you know, uh, you know, the other side of it, that, you know, occasionally things do go wrong. Yeah, we're, we're getting the final tweaks, I guess, of this China Bond Connect, which I know uh, you've been very vocal about. Tell us a little bit more uh, what you think is the significance with this launch. I think, uh, you know, it's like uh, our democratic development step by step, you know, the opening up of the mainland market. Um, and I think if you look at uh, Hong Kong and mainland financial connection and relationship over the past 20 years, it has you know, gone from strength to strength. Don't forget, Shanghai you know, started business in 1992, five years before the handover. But Ronnie, there's a sense that if China gets, uh, as it continues to be integrated into global financial markets, we've seen some cracks here in, in Hong Kong already, you know, whether it's short sellers targeting some Chinese companies here in Hong Kong, some of these small cap stocks, which are concerns about murky governance or whatnot. How, as a foreign investor, how, how are you going to assure foreign investors on these risks? Well, I think it's, a, it's an issue of the regulatory framework uh, and the people, obviously, behind and enforcing you know, our regulations, our rules and regulations, and also a question of education of the market. Uh, and, you know... Um, <laughs> you, you think there needs to be a little bit more regulatory reforms? No, I think, I think there needs to be, you know, sort of... You know, very, we need to be very watchful and very careful about incidents developing like this. Um, and, uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, very active uh, financial media. Uh, so that also helps you know, in, the over, in the overall oversight uh, of our markets. The Hong Kong dollar, do you think it needs to retire? <laughs> Not just yet. Not just yet. Yeah, I think, I think uh, once the yuan becomes an international currency, freely convertible, you know, that's probably the time to, you know, to look at it. Is that 10 years down the line, 20? You know, where do you see that? You know, the one thing I've learned is that with uh, progress in China, uh, don't try and predict the time because they always surprise us. 
Yeah, uh, it certainly does. You know, I also want to mention but, you know, all the hats that you do wear, Ron. You were also uh, the campaign manager of the chief executive elect, Carrie Lamb, during her election campaign. And you mentioned about what she could possibly bring to this new administration. What could she bring that CY Lamb could not? Well, I think uh, Carrie is uh, a much more open style, uh, much more uh, participation, and certainly during the campaign, uh, you know, we saw her doing that quite actively, and also her um, policy priorities, which is the economy, education, and housing. And I think these are the immediate things. But of course, uh, aging is an issue. Uh, so you know, going forward, she's got quite a full, you know, quite a full plate. Yeah, we were speaking to Fred Ma from MTR, uh, the chairman, uh, earlier, and he said, you know, President Xi is very familiar with Hong Kong. He's made several trips here in the last couple of years. He ha thinks that he knows what China is. What do you think President Xi is missing? What does he not know about Hong Kong? Probably um, not, not enough about the people, and that's you know, partly our fault as well, not making ourselves known. Um, and also, you know, I, you know trying to understand the greater picture, the bigger picture for the country. Um, and also, you know, on the international uh, level, how we in Hong Kong can help play a role uh, and you know, walk along uh, with mainland China as, as it develops.